Hey guys, it's Tina here. Welcome back to another episode of Tina Tries It. In today's episode, I'll be trying out henna. If you haven't already, make sure you click subscribe below to stay updated with future videos and also help me get to 2 million subscribers by the end of this year. Typically in my Tina Tries It series, I try out weird, cool, funky, quirky products. I try it out for the first time and give you sort of like a first impressions. But now I want to expand my series and explore different beauty services from different cultures to learn more about beauty from all over the world, not just what I'm exposed to. So to kick things off, I've invited an amazing henna artist, Payal Sharma. She's located in Sydney and she'll be explaining what henna is and how it's done. Okay, so I've got the lovely henna artist here. Hey guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you for I literally found her on Instagram. <laughs> I was it's like stalking her feed and you do such amazing, amazing <laughs> work. And I've never had henna done. I don't I don't even know what it's about, but I think it's just so beautiful. Can you explain to me what it is and why people get it done? Yeah. So henna is an organic paste that people use to make some body tattoos. The paste itself comes from a tropical plant and the botanical name is Lausanne Inersa. Oh wow, not, not hard at all. It kind of no. sounds like a Harry Potter spell. <laughs> it does, it does. Um, so basically what happens is people dry the leaves, they crush it into a very fine powder and henna artists such as myself, we mix some essential oils into it, some sugar, lemon juice, water and we turn it into a paste so that we can apply it on um, other people's hands and we have hair, um, nails and basically anywhere. Nails, you can put yeah. it your nails. Yep. Oh, so you nice. can use it as nail polish. Oh wow, yeah. I actually heard like some people use it on their hair like to dye it or something, yeah. even eyebrows, right? Yeah, that's Is it. that the same sort of paste or you mix yeah. it a bit differently? It's exactly the same paste, so it gives a really nice maroon to, um, stain to it. Oh, awesome. Okay, so now there's a few different types of henna, like the different colors, it's like black, the brown and the white. So what's what's the main differences? Yeah, so black henna should be avoided at all costs. It has some very harsh chemicals in it. Mm -hmm. um, the one particular chemical that's very, very bad for your skin is called PPD. And that's what you find in most uh, hair products, such as hair, hair dye and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it can be very harsh on your skin and uh, cause an allergic reaction. Um, so it's always important to ask your henna artist if they're using organic henna or if they're using chemical henna. Ooh, yeah. So okay. you're looking, oh, it's also known as brown henna, the organic. Okay, note to self, stay away from black henna. And what about the white henna? Does that stay in your skin as well? Um, white henna doesn't uh, really embed itself into the skin. It sits on the surface. It's just a mixture of some body paint, body adhesive, latex. So any with a latex allergy, just be very mindful of that. Mm -hmm. um, it is waterproof, so it does stay for about three to four days. Mm. Yep, but if you do scrub on it, it will come off much quicker. Yeah, I've, I've been seeing a lot more on Instagram, like the white and some people put gold even yeah. on there. Yeah, so you can have some a lot of different colors um, and it's very easy to make so yeah when do people get henna is it like do you have to be married or getting married or you know to one of those ceremonies to get henna or well uh, it's it's part of many cultures and traditions and rituals. So in Hinduism, which is a um, faith that I follow, brides normally get it done to kind of enhance their beauty on the wedding day. Mm -hmm. And guests and families get it done to show joy and happiness as well. So normally a lot of South Asian weddings are very colorful and vibrant. Yeah. And everything comes together with the jewelry and the clothing and the henna. Is it true the weddings go for like a few days? Yes, so you have about... <laughs> I'd say at least seven days. Like seven if you days. are a guest, yeah. Seven you, days. Yeah. You gotta block out your whole week for You have to block out the entire ring. You have like a bangle party, you have a like a night where everyone sings, you have a night where everyone does henna, and then you have like the wedding, then you have the reception and after parties and whatnot. Okay, if any of Huge. you guys are getting married and you're gonna have a seven day wedding, can you please invite me? Please. I would love to <laughs> attend. Yeah, when you get married, when are you getting married? I have no idea. <laughs> Let's hope it's not soon. <laughs> can you talk about the process? Like how long does it take you to do henna? 
Hand designs take anywhere between five to 10 minutes, um, depending on the design itself and the intricacy. Mm -hmm. uh, bridal designs can take anywhere between three hours to six hours. Is that because they get the hands and feet done? Yeah, yeah that's right. So they normally get both sides of the arms up to the elbow, feet up to the ankles, or feet up to the legs, depending on what the bride wants herself. Wow, okay, and I thought hair and makeup takes long. <laughs> Could you imagine doing henna, hair and makeup, and then like, that's the whole day gone, and then yeah. like, wait, did I miss the wedding? <laughs> It um, does, yeah. That's great, that's amazing. Now, what about like when you apply, does it get left on the skin or? So when it first, um, when, I'm, when, when I first apply the henna, you leave it on for a couple of hours just so that the dye can seep into the skin. Um, when it first comes off, it's a very bright orange and overnight it goes through a process called oxidization and mm -hmm. it turns into a nice maroony dark brown color. Oh wow, it's kind of like you're getting tanned. Yes, <laughs> but very slowly. <laughs> really slowly and you start off orange, which yeah. might be a bit of a worry. And what about the white one? It just, you just don't have to wash it off, it just stays? No, it just stays. So it basically dries within five minutes and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. For those of you who want to maybe try it out at home, can you buy this stuff anywhere and then maybe just do it yourself? Or So you can go to your nearest Indian store or supermarket, you can grab some cones from there or you can always approach any henna artist in your local city because there's a likely chance they'll be making organic and fresh henna for you. And how did you get started with this? Because I know, okay, Payot's actually like a superwoman, she's not doing this full time, believe it or not. <laughs> she's actually studying as well, right, to be a, a nurse. nurse. Yes. So how did you actually get into henna? Uh, so I started when I was 12, I started practicing the art of henna only because it's such a big part of our culture wow. um, and just did it on my friends and family and it wasn't until about three years ago I decided to do it professionally and do it as a business. So now I just kind of have to balance both studying and my clients, but it works out very well because I enjoy it. So oh, that's so good. See, you can also like have a little side hustle. Maybe it's going to turn into like a full-time gig. <laughs> Who knows when you finish university. Yeah. Um, now, hey, I was going to apply um, the brown henna and the white henna so you guys can see what it looks like. And I can't believe it only takes like 10 to 20 minutes yeah. max. That's crazy. I would take all day doing my <laughs> one. Um, so I'm really thankful that she's doing it on me today. So let's get started. Can you show me what the oh, henna sure. looks like? So this is the brown mm -hmm. and then we have the white. Cool.
So this is the end masterpiece. Look how pretty both are, the white henna and the brown one. It didn't take very long at all, what, like 10, 10 minutes on each hand. And I could see the consistency with the white henna was a little bit different, a bit thinner, more yeah. like much more liquid runny yeah i guess um then the brown henna both are really beautiful what's the aftercare for this what do i like i feel like i can't move yeah. I, I <laughs> no you definitely can't move the day. no yeah. chores no nothing just gotta be lazy um, alfred's gonna have yeah. to feed me <laughs> um so you have to leave it on for at least uh five to six hours if possible um and when you do i take it off you just need to keep your hands very warm because mm. heat allows it to get darker and allows that oxidization process to happen so yeah and what about the white one? The white one's dry It's all dry, yeah. yeah. You're good to go with the white one. You don't need to do much with that. Awesome. So I guess I'll just be lounging around looking amazing with yeah. my new henna art on my hands. But thank you so much That's for coming great. in today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this new episode. I want to really explore other beauty cultures as well. So if there's anything else that you would like recommend from your culture, please comment below. For now, you can check out Payal's page. I'll leave it in the description box below and I'll also tag her Instagram up. She's located in Sydney, but she's also available for international booking. So if you have a wedding coming up, like a <laughs> seven to 14 day one, don't be afraid to contact her. But thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Really thank you. It. Thank Make you. sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll speak to you guys next time. Bye.